So hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Real Estate Investor. I'm Josh Cantwell. I'm excited that you're with me. Thank you so much to all of you who have left us uh, ratings, reviews, engage with us in our Facebook group, Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Don't forget that you can register and grab a free membership in that Facebook group and share ideas with us anytime. Um, I, I'm just I'm so honored always to be with you guys and to share all, everything that I can and answer questions. Uh, we had a great webinar this past week with hundreds and hundreds of people on the line talking a little bit about raising capital and our automation software that we use to serve autoresponders to our passive investors. Uh, if you want to register to see some sample deals of ours and to uh, see some of our investments, check out freelandventures.com slash passive. Uh, there you can register for a free account. Uh, you can receive our information and also check out some of our deal flow. Uh, today, I have a special guest for you. His name is Anthony Metzger. Anthony is the owner founder of financialbedrock.com. Uh, Anthony has an amazing story. He actually, after listening to uh, podcasts on multifamily investing, decided that he wanted to become a syndicator. He had never done a real estate deal before in his life, either residential or commercial. Uh, through the podcast, he found a private equity firm that was actively syndicating deals. He reached out, he signed up for their course, he attended their live events, he began and learned how to underwrite deals, and sure enough, within 18 months, sourced and found his first multifamily deal. Now, this was not a small multifamily deal. It was a 218 unit uh, that him and his partners ended up buying for roughly $12 million. And so on this webinar, or I'm sorry, on this podcast, you are going to hear from Anthony, number one, about how he found and sourced this 218-unit apartment deal with zero experience. Number two, you're going to find the questions that Anthony asks a broker on their very first call. Even though Anthony didn't have a lot of experience, didn't have a big balance sheet, never raised money before, how he was able to get deal flow from brokers with zero credibility. Number three, you're going to find how Anthony partnered with other sponsors who did have the balance sheet, the equity, the cash flow to be able to sponsor the loan and syndicate the deal. And you're going to hear about what Anthony is up to now sourcing deals in his markets of Memphis and Little Rock. Even though, again, Anthony still is a relatively new investor, Anthony's completely skipped over sourcing the small multifamily deals, the small residential deals and even the small apartment deals. He's gone right for the 200 plus apartment complex deals. And so in this interview, especially for those of you that are brand new or new to intermediate, you're gonna love this interview on Accelerated Real Estate Investor with Anthony Metzger. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early, with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So Anthony, what's going on, man? Thanks for joining me today on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Thanks for coming out some time. Josh, I appreciate you inviting me on the show. I've been a big fan of your show. It's helped me a lot in my career as a syndicator, and I'm very honored and happy to be on your show. Awesome, man. Good stuff. So listen, I know we had a few minutes to prep for this. I'm excited to hear about your, your, your big 218 unit that you guys closed, but I'm always curious what my guests are up to right now things that they're working on that they're excited about in their kind of entrepreneurial journey or their investing journey. So what do you have cooking? Sure. So um, right now at this very moment, actually, I uh, just came back from a trip down to the markets that we usually do deals in, which is Little Rock and Memphis. And um, so I just came back from a trip there with our investors, our partners, put a few offers in, um, actually got sent a deal uh, while I was down there. So I'm actually looking at that right now. That's actually a 320 unit. Nice. Um, which is a massive deal, 1980s construction, it's a great property right next door to a mall. So 
excited about um, looking at these deals, finding the next opportunity and closing on it and uh, continuing to grow myself, my partner's wealth and my investor's wealth. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm excited about right now. Nice. How about in your personal life? Anything fun going on outside of business? Yeah, you know, um, so I've got, we, I work for a family company, so I do syndication real estate um, outside of those work hours, but no, I'm excited about uh, a lot of things. Uh, my brother just had a baby. Um, I have five weddings this year, which means four bachelor parties, which is pretty nice. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so no, a lot going on too in the personal life. So very busy, got no time to get, get bored, but uh, no, yeah, everything's going great. Good for you, man. Good for you. Yeah. Good work on that. And hopefully uh, some of those deals will, will pan out for you. So I know you're from the Twin Cities. Yes. I'm curious just to hear about like, how you selected some of those markets and sub markets that you're picking. What was some of the criteria maybe that you used? Did you have a JV partner down there that you knew? Was it the economics of those areas? What were your thoughts on why you picked Little Rock, uh, Memphis and some of those markets? Sure. Yeah. So um, when I first got into real estate, actually the very first deal I ever did was a 218 unit. I never did single family houses, duplexes, all that stuff. So look at you baller yeah. <laughs> right for the big boy. I like it. Right. So, so what I did when I got in, started in this, in the real estate business was syndications and I didn't have any money. So how can I do these deals and add value to somebody? And the way I found it was by finding a group that was currently doing deals and deciding that the way I could add value to them was by finding a deal that met their criteria and bringing it to them. And so I found out where it was, they were doing deals. So that's how I found out. That's how I decided to do deals down in the Southeast is because that's where they wanted to do deals. So I said, all right, yeah. that's where you guys want to go. That's where I'll go. And that's actually how I ended up down in that region. Nice. And how did you approach them? Like you didn't really have a relationship with them before. Right. You found a group that was already doing deals. They were doing deals in those markets. Mm -hmm. uh, those are great, great cash flowing markets, by the way. You know, we like the Midwest for sure and the South and the Southeast. Um, those fit the criteria where we would be looking as well. But I'm just curious how you approach them. Did you make a connection on social media? Was there an intermediary, a friend that connected you? Were you at a conference? How did you make the initial connection with someone like that? I think a lot of our audience that would be in similar situation as you were, looking for how do I get in this business with not a lot of uh, maybe of extra money or credit, maybe not a huge balance sheet uh, and connecting with another active syndicator is a great way to do it, to add to your balance sheet and to, to get, you know, kind of get your feet wet and get in the first deal. But to start with the 200 plus units, a huge, you know, that's a huge win right out of the gate. How did you make the initial connection and how'd you build the relationship? Right. So I came across this group by listening to podcasts and I fell upon and got um, recommended to listen to their podcast. Now, at this point in time, when I first heard their podcast, I didn't know what a syndication was. I didn't know anything. I didn't even know I wanted to be in real estate. I just started listening. And then they, they on their podcast, made an offer. They say, by the way, we're syndicating deals. And if you want to, if you find a deal that meets our criteria, you know, we're, we're trying to buy more deals. Bring it to us. So I, 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 there was that call to action in that podcast. So what I did immediately is I went right to their website, found out more about them. Um, they had some, uh, a little program for sale that I paid, um, thousand dollars for, and that actually taught you how to underwrite deals, um, for them and for, and it, it really showed you what it is they're looking for. And so once I got into that, um, they actually held a live event and that's when I went to that live event. And that's when I made my introduction to them. Um, you know, you know, it was a three day event. So there's coffee breaks, um, happy hours. So I was able to during those moments, go up, shake the guy's hand and meet his team and just, Hey, want to let you know, I bought your program. Um, put me on your radar because I'm actively shopping and looking for deals to bring to you guys. Nice. And so that's, that's how I got uh, introduced with that. So group. truly just kind of working in the dirt, you know, yeah. just one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, heard about the opportunity, bought the course, attended the live event, made the relationship and then got busy yeah. looking for deals that meet their criteria. Exactly. 100%. Good for 100%. you, man. Good yep. for you. That's fantastic because that's exactly how it should be, right? Yeah. If somebody is a new, uh, somebody who's interested, you know, that, that maybe can't raise a couple million bucks yet or can't sponsor a $10 million loan yet. I know all that's, you know, in, in, in their future, uh, maybe in your future, but just not, you know, right out of the gate, maybe capable right. of doing that. 
So it's like, well, you know, how, how do I do this now? Now all of a sudden it's like, dude, I own a part of a 218 unit apartment building that really you found, you had a big, big part, big uh, responsibility to pulling that deal together. So if you go now meet with other brokers, other wholesalers, commercial lenders, like you've got the ability to say, yeah, I found this deal. We syndicated it together. It's part of my portfolio. Um, just fantastic stuff, man. Great for you. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome stuff. <laughs> I appreciate um, it. So what did you do well? Like what, what happened in that process? Did you think like, what would you tell somebody else that maybe is in the shoes that you were in? What did you think you did right? What, what are things maybe that you would do differently that maybe would have made it go faster? What are you, some of the things that you thought like, you know, I did this right. I would do this again. I would do that right. I would do this again if I was some, you know, a, a new person in your shoes. Right. Yeah. So to, to, to rewind a bit. So from the moment I bought that program to the moment we closed on, uh, on that deal was 18 months, almost two years, actually, if you round up. Um, so during that two years, I was just shopping for deals, analyzing deals on my own time, you know, not being yeah. paid for this. This is stuff I was doing after work, after doing eight hours, actually waking up at five because I do six to six to two. So um, so this is an 18 month period. And during that 18 months, got close to an 88 unit, also out of state. Um, and that one didn't end up working out simply because we couldn't agree on the um, terms and the purchase agreement. And after going down there visiting, I felt like this is, a, we're going to close on this one. So then to go from, it was like going from very, being on a very high to all of a sudden, like just very, very sober. And uh, square one. It's, right. And so that moment there was like a moment where I almost quit. I almost decided, you know what, this isn't going to work. There's just way too many moving parts for a deal to ever really work. Um, but then I went back to my desk um, and I, I just did a little thinking and I was like, you know what, people are doing this, this group, you know, what you got to look at is, am I better off today as far as getting closer to a deal after failing than before I failed? The answer is yes. So I actually made progress, even though I didn't succeed on that deal, yeah. because what happened was I, I got closer to the group that I brought the deal to. We had a lot more conversations. We worked together. I went and chopped the property. They told me what to look for, blah, blah, blah. So I actually made a relationship. So I actually came out of that a lot better. However, yes, when, when I didn't get it, it was a big hit. So the secret, and this, I'm not the first one to say this, but the, the thing that's really contributed to getting that first deal and, and the second deal and so on is not giving up because mm -hmm. it is very discouraging. I actually get people that contact me say, hey, I'll bring you a deal. And I actually welcome that. I just put an offer in on a 200 unit deal in Little Rock that somebody brought to me after hearing me on a podcast. So I do deals with people too. And um, anyway, so I see, so the important thing is just don't give up on it. It will, it, at least for me, it ended up working. Yes, it took 18 months plus, but yeah. eventually it ended up working out. And then once you cross that finish line, you have so much more leverage to doing your next deal. That's the power of the first deal. Yeah, we call it in our business, we call it getting reps, right? So- okay. Um, like I played a lot of sports in high school, played college football. My partner played college football with me. And, you know, when we were at football practice, you know, which was 10 weeks of the regular season, you know, maybe we make the playoffs plus all the preseason, frankly, from day one to the last day, we're running some of the same damn plays, the same darn freaking drills. It was a grinder, man, but it was getting reps, right? And then you go in the gym your bench pressing, squatting, all this other stuff, it, kind of doing the same thing. Still as a 45 year old today, I still do a lot of the same reps in the gym, same bench press, the same squats, the same leg press that I did when I was 15, yeah. 30 years <laughs> getting reps, right? Getting reps. So for you in the multifamily space, like going through one underwrite after another, yeah. making offers, writing LOIs, looking at purchase agreements, looking at how a deal can be syndicated. What's the structure going to be? Even though you kind of struck out on the first several, then almost had that 88 unit didn't work out. I love your mindset that you said, look, I'm, I'm closer. I'm not going to quit now, even though you're tempted to quit. Right. I would be too, you know, but you're one step closer to getting the next deal because you're getting the reps. Like it's like, if you want to bench 300 pounds, you don't just get on the bench and bench 300 pounds day one. Yeah. You might start with benching 150 pounds, then it's 175, 200 and so on to get to the point of 300. You're like, Oh my God, I did it. Like amazing, amazing. Like 
just stick to it, patience. What was it like though? Tell me when you were almost about to quit. I'm, I'm curious to hear what your mindset was. You're probably sitting at your desk, your head's in your hands. Like, dude, I can't, this has almost been two years. I, 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 it's not going to happen. Like what the self doubts creeping in. Tell me about that moment. Sure. So me personally, I've always had this entrepreneurial spirit. Like I really, really, really want to become rich and successful. And I've got this vision in my head of the way I want to live out my life. And so I really want to execute so that I can pull that off. And when I went back to my desk after that, after not getting that deal, I looked, I go, okay, what else am I going to go do? Because I'm not going to just, okay, quit doing this and then just go, you know, all right, whatever, go sit on the couch and, and not do anything. The question was, if I don't do this, what else am I going to go and pursue? Sure. And after already investing so much time and energy and building relationships in this, I go, God, pull, pull the rug out under this. What I've done so far would be kind of, would be a shame, especially without something else to go chase right now. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really, I go, what do I have to lose? What else do I have? To, can I go do at this point in time? I mean, to quit would just, for me, would be actually to just go do something else, pursue something else. I couldn't find anything at the time. I go, this is a proven, proven business, a proven method. It's not like I have to go invent the next computer, the next wheel or whatever. So it's like, if I just, I just believe that if I keep doing this and keep up the reps, like you said, um, eventually something would land and it did. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit more about the deal. Like how did you guys structure it? Like if you're okay telling us like what was the purchase price of like approximate yeah. numbers, was there a CapEx budget? Were you guys able to bump the rents from, from X to what, you know, Z? What's that all going to look like? What's the stabilized value? What is the, what does the exit strategy look like? Is it a refi? Is it a sale? Tell me a little bit more about the mechanics of the actual deal. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so the deal was 218 units. We paid 11.25 for it. Um, that's about 50, 51 of doors what we paid mm -hmm. for that one. Um, I'm a general partner on it with these guys. We did, um, so the GPs got 25% of it. Our investors got uh, 75. Um, the returns average cash on cash, 9% to 11% is what we're, is what we underwrote for. Um, a five-year hold is what we're doing on that one. Yes, yeah, so value add, definitely there was opportunity to go in there and raise the rents. That's the most obvious value add component mm -hmm. to any deal. One great value add component to a deal that a lot of people may not look at or consider is actually reducing expenses. You know, sometimes you get some of these um, owners that have, they tie in so much of their personal with the, with the property's expenses and right. they just let things go and whatever. And they overspend on certain things because see we, when we are doing deals and, and renovating properties, we can leverage. See, that's the nice thing about being part of a bigger team and a group is we can leverage, Hey, we're renovating this one. So we're going to pay, we're going to buy, you know, 218 new sinks instead of the guy who's going to go buy three. So anyway, we can be more efficient and this is our full-time jobs. Well, most, most of the teams is, um, so we can do things better so we can manage better and be more efficient. So you can add value by reducing expenses. Um, for example, on this deal, the water bill was massive mm -hmm. and we didn't know why, but we underwrote for it. And Hey, this is the actual water bill. What we ended up doing is after we got the deep closed on it, we had a, an inspector come in and we looked and we found a, a leak in the pipe at the, in, 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 um, on the property, patch that up. And then we put in, um, um, water efficient fixtures in the property, we saved like 50% on the water bill. So we just nice. reduced our expenses right there. And then at the end with the exit in five years, that's going to affect the NOI, which is going to grow the NOI, blah, blah, blah. And then you can get more for this uh, at the sale. So um, yeah, it was pretty much like you kind of your typical syndication, I would say. Um, yeah. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Yeah, love it. 
How did you position yourself, Anthony? A lot of people might be asking listeners who are on the kind of a new to intermediate uh, kind of, you know, part of the part of their journey. They might be saying, well, how did Anthony position himself? I mean, he'd never done a deal before, not even a residential deal. And all of a sudden he's in there, he's finding deals. How was he able to position himself, posture up with the broker or the seller? Mm. And so part of it could be your partnership, the other GPs, you kind of leverage them. Tell us about that because some people are like, there's no way I could be doing a $12 million deal on my own. What can I learn from Anthony as far as the way that he postured up, the way that he presented himself, the way he gave himself credibility mm-hmm. so they could even get in the game? How did right. you do that? Right. So and the tricky thing with the first deal is I couldn't actually leverage these part, this group because they don't want, you know, there's a lot of people out there like me listening to their podcast. Oh, find us a deal, bring it to us and we'll do it. So I can't just go out there and say, hey, I'm with this guy. Uh, yeah. when that's not technically true. And that's actually that, that group actually pretty much said, you know, don't go around using our name because you're not part of a team until we do a deal and whatever. So I couldn't leverage that, that which is the toughest thing. Cause nowadays I get to leverage my partners. The fact that I got this property, you know, five miles down the road from the one I just made an offer on. And so I, now that's the power of doing your first deal is you get so much more sure. leverage, but before then, so to answer your question, which what I did to position myself with the broker, when I bought that thousand dollar program in that program, they educated us on what I called the language of multifamily real estate syndication. Mm-hmm. So I spoke that language fluently. I could talk about cap rates. I could talk about um, debt. I could talk about um, expenses, um, income opportunities. So when I'm on the phone with a broker, I'm speaking the same language he's speaking. I'm not asking, I know not to ask him a certain question that would make me look like I'm an amateur. Yeah, sure. so I'm, I'm strategic with the questions I ask. I'm educated. So I know the language and the words I should be using, what questions I should be asking um, to make it look like I have more credibility. And, you know, so like on this deal to get more specific, um, found this deal is actually part of a portfolio. So this was like 350 units. Uh, dissected the portfolio, found that one worked. This one did work for us. The other one didn't. So we pursued this one. Um and so when I picked up the phone for the first time, I, uh, well, first I sent an email inquiring about the deal, then I scheduled a call. As soon as we hop on the phone, like I tried as quickly as possible to start digging into the deal. So we could, because the thing is like, if I can start the conversation and we get rolling and start getting um, questions and answers going, you know, he, it's kind of awkward. Well, it's like, they didn't really go back to wait a second. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So, so wait, wait, slow down. You've never done a deal before. Yeah. 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 What, what have you done before? Like, you know, yeah, I love that. Approach. Um, so yeah, so we kind of got kind of worked my way past that immediately just by firing off questions, talking about the deal. Um, now don't get me wrong. Eventually once you get closer, um, like when you got to send in an LOI and stuff, they're going to ask for more specific stuff. But at that point, once we get that close by then, um, I had brought the deal to the group and see if they're interested. And then once you're at that level, you can um, leverage them. So yeah. it's kind of like a bridge. I got to find a way to get to that point without having to leverage them. And the way to do that, um, to answer the question, is to be educated and speak the language and know what questions to ask, what not to ask, more importantly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, love it, love it. So, um, <laughs> so I, on a personal note, right? My yeah. wife is really good at asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> so I always feel like she's in control because the person who asks the question is in mm-hmm. control. Mm-hmm. That's part of sales psychology, right? So if you get on the phone with a broker and you start peppering them with questions you're in control, right? So instead of you jumping on the phone and saying, hey, I'm Anthony Metzger and I, 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 want, to, I want to get involved in a deal and what deals do you have? I love your approach of saying this is a specific deal. You've maybe got their email broadcast or logged into their portal. A lot of these guys have a back office portal you could sign up for, get the deal, get the offering memorandum, the rent roll, the T3, the T12, pull that stuff down and then start, you know, schedule up a call with the broker or vice versa, schedule up the call first and then talk about the deal. But as soon as you get into the deal details, right, and ask questions, you're in control, mm-hmm. right? The broker might have 40 years of experience, might have a lot more going on, might understand a lot more than you do. And maybe you're just kind of like faking it till you make it. Yeah. But if you're asking questions, you're in control. So my audience needs to remember that. That's a very key thing 
that Anthony did well that I would highly recommend that you guys do is have these questions. Anthony, let me ask you that specific question. What are maybe just two or three questions that you like to ask in that initial interview about a deal? What are some things that you want to know right away? The way you can actually take can kind of control of the conversation. Yeah. Well, one, one, one way um, to kind of impress or show that you know what you're talking about when you're asking questions is ask very specific questions about the deal and to show that you've analyzed it. Like, for example, you know, you get on a phone and this might not be the first question you ask, but to show that you know what you're doing, say, hey, look, I love, I like this deal. I, I saw, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm projecting that we could raise the rents. I agree with you. You could raise the rents hundred dollars. Now I see that the, the, the units with uh, washer dryer hookups are getting a premium. Do all the units have washer dryer uh, hookups? Now you're getting, see like a question like that shows that you looked at the rent roll. You saw that some do have it. The mm -hmm. others you're not quite sure. Ones that do have it have a premium. So anyway, so it shows that you're really diving deep into it and that you know what you're looking for in, in the right question. Um, that's just, yeah, that's just like a very specific thing. But um, yeah, I mean, to get to get right in, I actually, I just had a call with a, a broker yesterday who just sent me a, an off-market deal. And I had some questions right away, like when's the call for offers? That was one of the first questions. Mm -hmm. So I have an idea of that. Um, is there going to be a new updated rent roll anytime soon? We have the one from last month. Do we have one from this month? This month, because I can see that's the pro forma self comping in the in the rent roll last month. I want to see if that's continuing into this month. Well, um, to, again, back with the washer dryer hookups. Um, you know what? What's what kind of cap rate are we looking at? If, what kind of cap rate would a, a, this property look like if it was fully stabilized um, mm -hmm. and achieving its pro forma? What kind of cap rates are you seeing for this product? Yeah, uh, fully stabilized. Stuff like that is like, you know, it's immediately they're going to start answering those questions. They're not going to say, okay, great. Thank you for those questions. You know, send me over a proof of funds. No, it's yeah. like, they're going to, they're going to start answering that. Then you can start a dialogue, you know, you know, I like to get personal, you know, make like, I don't know, just like create a relationship with your conversation as opposed to just being so cold and, and robotic yeah. showing being nervous. Yes. But I do want to go back real quickly what you said was very important, which is getting on these brokers mailing list. So you don't need to like, so what I did, how I got this deal sent to me, I'm on an automatic list. I went to New Market Night Frank's website, huge, massive brokerage firm across the country. I went on there and signed up to be on their mailing list for multifamily deals. Did that with the big, all the big ones, Cushman. I can, I did that with um, Bricadia. I did that with Marcus and Melchap. So you're getting, so I'm getting deals every single day sent to my inbox. Yeah. Anyone can do this. So you can go and start getting deal flow and you meet. And then the nice thing is you can get the numbers and analyze this deal before you get on the phone. And that's something yeah. you pointed to, which is key. So you want to be able to have a script, be prepared for that phone conversation with this broker. And the way you do that is by having a look at the deal before just calling them and asking for that deal. Because if you just call Love them it. and ask for the deal, then they're going to immediately probably start. Yeah, questioning. like what do you have? Yeah. Do like I start with the stuff that they already have that's on the market that has an offering memorandum, possibly a right. call for offers. It's usually in their back office portal, all the ones you mentioned, plus like CBRE, mm -hmm. Calgary's International, uh, you know, Newmark, all the big boys, uh, Cushman for sure, all those, you know, Mark Samilla chap, yep. going in, finding the, the local broker, going to the website, finding where you can log into their investor portal. You're going to fill out some information. They usually have like six to 10, sometimes 15 questions, depending on who it is, who you are, what you do, that kind of stuff. But yep. then it becomes a basic username and password, log right. in and see what kind of stuff they have in their offering memorandums. You spend, like my, my CFO this morning says, I get all these email broadcasts because he signed up. And my CFO is not the one actively buying properties. That's me and my business partners. But he's like, I'm on all these lists. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he had signed up on their portals, but he did. So that's an easy way for any investor, new, intermediate, or advanced, just to see more deal flow. Yeah, I love it. Anthony, the other thing I would highly recommend too is ask the broker if they were the buyer what would be the value add improvements that they would do? Sure. Yeah. Right. Because now not only is the broker having to talk, you're in control because you're asking the question, but now they're going to kind of throw up with their business plan. Like mm -hmm. what's the business plan. They're going to start to try to sell the deal instead of you selling yourself to them on why you're capable of taking the deal down. They're going to start to sell the deal to you. And again, if you're the buyer, now you've become the buyer. Now you're in control. Yeah. Right. So yep. control comes from, I'm the buyer, sell me the deal. 
And also I'm the one asking questions. Now I have two forms of control. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to start asking me again, show, send me your proof of funds. Because right. that's ultimately mm-hmm. the question we're trying to avoid when we're yeah. new to intermediate is <laughs> send me your proof of funds. Yeah. In my newest real estate investing book, The Flip System, you'll learn the proven secrets and strategies that I've used to be a successful real estate investor. You'll also hear the story of my journey from quitting my job to doing over 2,000 units of apartments. The Flip System is now available for a limited time, and you can grab your free copy at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. You'll learn the same proven principles and secrets and investing strategies that I used to quit my job and pursue a life of financial freedom. In this book, I'm sharing exactly how I was able to personally close over 750 profitable real estate deals, make over 400 private lender loans, raise over $30 million, and acquire over 2,000 units of cash flowing apartments. Get my newest book now for free at getflipsystem.com slash podcast. That's getflipsystem.com slash podcast. Yeah. Great stuff. So Anthony, let me, let's, let's pivot now to kind of your start. What were, when you first got going, never did a deal. You're looking back now, what, what were some initial challenges, maybe some roadblocks, even mental roadblocks that you had some initial challenges that you had to overcome doing this first deal and just getting in the business. Yeah. So the big challenge for me was um, getting to, once I got to, bought that program is learning how it is to analyze the deal. Again, I came out of like, z- I went from zero to immediately starting to learn how to analyze hundred unit deals. So I had to learn all of that. I never came from a background of that. So I had to, what is a cap rate? Okay, Google. So like, it just took a long time to start um, understanding this. Now I will give um, somebody a great piece of advice that is wants to start out like me and just getting started. So this is for the the guy who hasn't done his first deal or the girl who hasn't done her first deal. What I did was I knew I wanted to be in this and those markets down there. So what I didn't want to do is the very first deals I look at and talk to brokers about are the ones in the market I want to shop because that's going to, because I know I'm going to mess up when I call somebody for the first time or the 10th time. Like as soon as, because I'm in a learning phase, I know I'm going to mess up. I know I'm going to ask dumb questions. I know I'm going to get hung up on. I know I'm going to get asked proof of funds for. Yeah. So how do I, I don't want to do that in the market that I know I want to grow in. Like I know my future is going to be in this market. So what I would, what I did is I started shopping deals um, in markets I knew I wasn't going to do deals in, for example, like Boston or New York or out East where I know that we just won't find a deal that meets our criteria. So what I did is, I would start analyzing deals just to practice the new calculator that I got um, to analyze deals, which is a big, huge, complicated thing. So I, I, to practice and get more comfortable with it, I would analyze pretty much any deal, even if I knew it probably wouldn't work. Then to practice getting on the phone with brokers, I would call brokers about deals and markets I know I'm not going to be in. So that way, when I do mess up, I don't want to mess up with the only, the only few brokers down in this market that I know I'm going to have to deal with in the future. So I started doing it with brokers in, um, in markets. I, I figure I probably won't ever do a deal in. So that's a, a nice little piece of advice for somebody that wants to get out there and practice, maybe make that phone call where they know they're going to get, you know, not do well. So, well, go practice it off on a different market. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Anthony, where do you see your business going from here? Yeah. So actually, believe it or not, I'm actually fairly fresh at this business. Um, I just got my website up recently, financialbedrock.com. Actually, if you go there right now, you can download the free, um, the free sample deal package on that 218 unit deal. So you can kind of see the numbers, see the business plan. Um, it's obviously not an active deal anymore. So anyone can, can download it for free and just see what a deal looks like that we're doing. Um, so yeah, I got the website up. Now I'm going to start um, becoming more of a capital raiser. I want to bring capital to these deals that we're doing. Um, I'm, I'm definitely a deal analyzer. That's my primary um, position, the way I bring value to people. Um, I can look at deals really well. I'm looking at a 320 unit right now. Just got sent to 92 last night off market. Um, so that's that's where I'm at right now to grow it. Just keep doing more deals, do it with more people, more partners, raise more money. Um, yeah. Love it. Love it. So Anthony, let's do this. Let's finish up the interview with our final five. 
Yeah. Uh, five quick questions, five quick answers, far off as fast as you can. You ready? Yes. All right, here we go. So your favorite way to find deals? Brokers and sending direct mail letter to, um, to owners. Got it. Favorite way to find capital or to fill up your capital stack, make relationships with money? Networking, traveling, and letting just letting people know what it is I'm up to and then conversing with them from there. Got it. Uh, what do you think is the best piece of advice? Could be financial advice, could be leadership advice, personal advice that you've ever received? Invest in yourself, self-development, um, courses on your own, and I do book, audio books, but just keep doing self-development audio books. Yeah, I have a great recommendation, by the way. I'm, I'm in the middle of a book right now called Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. I'm a huge fan of Jay Shetty. Uh, he has the number one health and wellness podcast in the world. Mm. Um, and his book, Think Like a Monk, came out last year. I just dug into it. Uh, it is phenomenal, phenomenal book. Um, so highly recommend that. I'm about three quarters of the way through it. Um, you should check it out, Anthony, as well as the rest of our audience. Think about that one. Anthony, what's your, what's your favorite way to think and decompress? You obviously have a regular day job, family business, plus you're doing syndications at night. You're obviously busy. Sometimes you just got to get away from your business to think about what the heck is going on. What's the next step for you in your, in your journey? How do you get away from the business? Yes. So one of my favorite things, actually, Saturday mornings when I, I don't have to go into the day job, I go and get a big, tall coffee. I get in my truck and I just go for a nice hour and a half drive around this beautiful lake out west of the Twin Cities. I'll just put on a podcast, an audiobook, or sometimes just some good music. And I just cruise with a, with a nice coffee first thing in the morning. It just freshens the mind. I love that. I love windshield time. Love it. Love it. Yeah, it's a great way to decompress, get away from the business. That's often when I get my best ideas is when I'm right. not thinking at all. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Anthony, who do you think, last question, who do you think is maybe the, the biggest leader in your life, the biggest mentor in your life that you've ever had? Again, personal, business-wise, entrepreneurship. Who do you think had the biggest impact and why? Yeah, so I would have to point, obviously, to like my dad has been great to me um, and my the current business partners I have right now. Um Matt Bronner, who's a guy actually you should probably have on your show if you mm -hmm. haven't already. Um, Drew Witz and Andrew Niff and these guys. Um, but then I go to audiobooks and podcasts. Right now, there's a guy named Mark Evans, DM. Mm -hmm. Mark Mark. Evans. Yep. He's got a podcast that's phenomenal and he's got great books. Um, you know, I've never met him, but his content to me is just so amazing that I consider him a mentor of mine, even though I don't know. He doesn't know me. I've never met him personally, but through his content, I, I consider that mentorship and it's been, he's got phenomenal podcasts and content. Nice. I love it, Anthony. Listen, you mentioned your website earlier. Why don't we yeah. wrap up here? Why don't you tell us again, your website for people to download that sample deal packet and where people can connect with you. Yeah. Financialbedrock.com is my website. It's got my contact on there. Definitely feel free to reach out to me, shoot me an email, give me a call. Like I said, I had a guy bring me a deal after listening, hearing me on a podcast. Uh, we put a full in, full asking offer on that deal. It's 200 units, also down in Little Rock. Um, you know, we're waiting to hear back, but uh, you never know what what can evolve from these uh, from these conversations. So definitely reach out, check out the website. Yeah, awesome stuff, Anthony. Listen, thank you so much for carving out some time today, man. I had a blast interviewing you. Thanks for joining us today on Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Josh, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you're doing, all the content you're putting out. It's phenomenal. So keep it up, and thank you so much for having me on the show. You got it. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Anthony Metzger. Thank you so much for engaging with us in this podcast. We appreciate all of your feedback, your ratings, and reviews. Don't forget to go to freelandventures.com slash passive to register for your free account to see some of our past deals, all of our documents, paperwork, and how we underwrote and reviewed those properties. If you feel compelled, also don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you get your videos, make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. Thank you so much for engaging with me today. I always love being on these podcasts to bring you as much value as I can. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Hey, Josh here. And do you want to win a free Accelerated Investor t-shirt? All you have to do is give Accelerated Investor, our podcast, Accelerated Investor, a rating and a review on iTunes, okay? Do that now. Then send us a screenshot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter 
What we're gonna do then is every week we're gonna pick our favorite rating and review and we're gonna send that person a free t-shirt and maybe again, some other cool fun stuff as well from Accelerated Investors. So again, don't forget to take a screenshot, leave a rating, review, take a screenshot, send it to us so we know exactly who you are. And then once a week, every week on the podcast, we will announce a new winner. Don't forget to take a screenshot and send it to us so we know exactly who you are. We'll announce a new winner every week. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com. Thank you.